So hello everybody. It is me. The, what the hell? <laughs> it's me, Demetra K, and I'm sitting here with Donovan Recovery Democrat Sadiq, also known as the Black Yule Brenner. And uh, we are not live. I want to say that right at the top. We are not live. It's our podcast, but we will be back later live. I don't know what we'll talk about. I have some ideas, so you know, stay tuned. Um, but anyway, the purpose of the Demetri K Show is to promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people and we can always strive to do better. Um, and we are going to talk about relationships today as that's what we typically talk about um, on this podcast. You know, it's funny. I always see a lot of relationship shows and stuff. And I'm like, man, we, we be saying all that stuff all the time. But, you know. Maybe one day we'll strike it big. You never know. But anyway, uh, Donovan, what say you? Well, what say you is if you see the black cat, that means he's that we've been on here a little bit too long. And look, he's already up here. We just started. <laughs> we just started, man. But anyway, uh, welcome to Demetri K Show. You guys see the scrolling banner there. If you guys donate and want to give your 100% of your uh, contribution to the content creator, that is one way to do it. Do not forget about the African Diaspora News Channel app. Please go ahead and download that. Become a member. Subscribe. Share it on your platforms. Great information in regards to what's going on in the African Diaspora. Again, uh, Apple Store. Um, and the play Google play, you guys can download it there, but great information there. And, you know, this is a pretty interesting topic because relationships within the, within the black diaspora needs to be addressed and we're going to address them. So Demetria, let's get into this, by the way, I have not seen this. So you're going to get my honest reaction. All right. So, um, this is what I saw. I saw this trending in the last couple of days. And that's uh, about a stepfather who made a revelation when he uh, returned back home. So it's about three minutes long. So y'all check it out. And uh, we're going to have a discussion about it, I'm sure. Here we go. I left my laptop over here, so I came to get it. And I get here, and the person that I had to be daddy for, because he didn't want to be a dad in the beginning, you know, he in the house with his game hooked to the TV. I, I live here. He's gone. He's gone. You proud of yourself? You proud of yourself? Hey, proud of funny? myself? It's funny. Okay. His game hooked to the TV I bought. And then she gives. She gives the daughter I've been raising, the daughter I taught how to speak, the daughter I taught how to walk, the daughter I taught how to use the pot. She he gave she gave her to him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this shit crazy, man. And you said you, to go to you, you said, but you All just said you, you just said you. that your baby daddy that didn't want to be a father that you said had all this. Shit. You say he came to pick up Summer, but his PlayStation hooked to the TV. That's what you're saying. I say he came over yesterday. And why was he here yesterday? To come chill with Summer. You said get Summer. Now it's chill with Summer. You say he came to get Summer yesterday, but his PlayStation hooked to the TV I bought. He back here today at 12 a.m. to pick up Summer. His PlayStation still hooked to the TV. Three days after you told me I had to leave because you needed to focus on you and your career and and dudes you ain't have space for that you ain't have space for our relationship the person that's been here through thick and thin regardless if i stayed home a week because summer got sick and got me sick and i couldn't go to work and brought and gave you 300 out of the 350 i made because i was sick whatever i got i give and and, and that's the real come on bro it ain't about money it's about it's about loyalty it's about it's about come on bro you don't know what it's about you know, the, the dude listen you can't you asked me to have a baby with you and so it. Back on yeah, because you got this because dude. I was paying for everything. I'm not paying you? Baby you were not paying for everything. You had a baby. Right, one oh, okay. Three. You had a baby with a dude while you were homeless and no car. You and had the baby. I was 17. <laughs> okay. You're not 17 now and he back exactly. around with his PlayStation because hooked to my no TV. Choice but to co parent. What are you talking about? Co parent? You had a parent in the house. What you talking about co parenting? You just kicked her parent that taught her how to, I taught her I taught her how to talk. I taught her how to use the pot. I taught her how to walk. And you talking about you had a co-parent with this guy who didn't want to be a parent. You never said that you couldn't be in her life, but quite frankly, we're not finna be together. I didn't want to be with you. 
You want to be with him. That's why his no. PlayStation hooked to the TV that I bought. No. Why his PlayStation end up here? I'm not going to keep repeating myself. So he came to pick it's, up Summer. already squared away. He came to pick up Summer. That's why his PlayStation hooked to the TV. He came over yesterday to see Summer. Today you said, you said to he left his PlayStation. Yes. <laughs> and he came to pick her up 12 o'clock in the morning. Really not you. Really just me. <clears throat> Donovan. <clears throat> okay. I didn't take a lot of notes because there's, there was no need to take a lot of notes. Fellas, get your passports. This is in a prime example that men have been saying from the beginning of time. Most men, being a stepfather at one time was a desirable thing because it was taking care of the widow. A widowed woman needs support from the community. And if a man steps in there, that's an honorable thing. That hasn't been an honorable thing for a long time now. Stepfathers are stepped on, disrespected, just in that situation, whatever. And the only, thing that, only note that I took is this. Supposedly, allegedly, she had a baby with the dude while she was homeless. Okay, I, I got that out of that. Did you hear that part? Sleeping in the car. Right. Then, and uh, fellas, how many guys have heard this? Every time a woman gets with the Ray Ray or Pookie, what is the number one excuse? Oh, I was young. I was young when that happened. Oh, you know, I, I was 17. Did you notice she said the same thing? It's a playbook. They have a playbook. And they are not accountable for anything. Accountability is a woman's kryptonite. All these women say the same exact thing. I was young. I was young. So you were young and you made that mistake with that dude. But now that dude is back in the house of a man that took you in, built you up. You guys built up together or whatever. And his stuff is there. His PlayStation's there. You have no respect for this man. And then you wonder why these guys are, uh, they don't want to deal, you know, with, with, with women with children. See what I'm saying? It, it, it's just the, I, I, I was young. I was young. It, it, it's just sad. But as a man speaking for myself, this is nothing new. Fellas, you guys know what you're getting into. You know what you're dipping your stick into. And you knew the job was dangerous when you took it, Fred. So, I mean, I'm not saying I don't have sympathy for the brother for what he's going through. But what do you expect with the young girl? Young girls, uh, we, the modern age is telling these women they can do what men do and the consequences are the same. The consequences aren't the same and they don't realize that. So, fellas, you know what's going on out there. If you're going to do with the young girl that wants to ride the sea carousel, this is what, what you're going to deal with. The guy that she really wants, the homeless guy that she really wants, that's why he's back there. That's why he's back there. You were just somebody to, 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 to send her a, a lifeline, use and save. Simple as that. Ray Ray and Pookie that's in jail, if he only's doing a three or four year bid, the minute he gets out, where do you think she's going to go in most cases? Back with Ray Ray and Pookie because that's the guy she really wants. But this ain't nothing new. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, so just to recap, uh, the stepfather sounds like he was put out or told to leave uh, so she can have some space and, you know, well, listen, uh, anytime somebody tells you, I just need some space, that means that they need some space so somebody else could take it up, you know, that's usually what that, right, that's you, to me, that's usually what it means, right? So anyway, it sounds like he circled back uh, and he came home and he saw that the baby daddy, who sounds like he abandoned her when, you know, uh, she was 17 when she had the child. And I can't remember. She said the child, he says she was 12 or 16. I don't know. One or two, something like that. So anyway, he uh, discovers that the stepdad, I mean, the, the baby daddy, the birth daddy is there. And he's, he's got his, his PlayStation plugged up to the TV, I think, uh, too. And one of the clips of his clothes were there or something like that. So she was trying to make it seem like, oh, he just got here. But then it sounds like he was there for two days, three days, or, you know, something like that. Clearly, she's a liar. Um, and so the uh, stepfather says, I taught her how to walk, 
talk, you know, potty trained her and, you know, all of that. And quite naturally, if he's there for the child, he was there for the mother as well. Like you said, when I met you, you was pregnant in a car, or homeless. And, you know, apparently your baby daddy got you in that position and left you there. And here I come, you know. Got you in that position, great words. You know, uh, you know give you a, uh, uh, and uh, the baby a better life. I'm sure he's the only father up until now, right? That uh, summer is the name of the, uh, the, the child. Uh, knows and yeah, that's a big slap in the face. He says, I've pretty much given you my all. And she says, oh, why, well, you know, I'm doing this. And he's, I, I, I don't believe her. I don't believe that she was taking care of everything. I totally believe that man was taking care of everything. Like he said, I was sick because Summer got me sick, which also tells you how close they probably are. You know, she got me sick and I can only make $350 that week. I gave you 300, kept 50 for myself. And here you are with your bonnet and your, your chicken frying dress on, walking around the house with your baby daddy. Like you, that to me, see, there's more than meets the eye. To me, that's a level of comfort. Right. Because Donna, we, we have people sometimes come over and we ain't walking around. You know, when you home by yourself, you you walking home, you know, you doing you. But somebody Baby comes boy, over, frying eggs naked. Yeah, you know, but when you got guests coming over, you button up a little bit. Now, what she had on seems like she was comfortable. Maybe they was lounging. You know, that's just kind of the sense that I got. Right. So my heart hurts for him. For one, because he did he he did the job that her real father did not want to do. And this heifer, I want to use something stronger, but I'm not going to yet anyway. This heifer is gaslighting him. So that's one thing I do not like is a gaslighting mofo. And gaslighting was somebody, you know, tries to make you think you're crazy. You know, it's like, I know what I see. I see this man's PlayStation plugged up and he's comfortable. He's kicking and he's lounging. And she talking about, oh, well, he just got here. You know, it ain't like we, I, I know what I see. Don't gaslight me, Heffa. You know, so she's a horrible person. I wish nothing good for her um, until she rearranges her understanding. But the other thing too, what makes me mad is because now the child is confused. This is who she knew her father to be her whole life. And then for whatever reason, uh, Ray Ray, why sees himself back in your life and you're going to negate this man who has held you down. And I'm going to tell you this, she'll probably never, ever, 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 because Ray Ray, listen, Ray Ray did your dirty ones in the back of a car. You're going to do it again. Okay. Just wait for it, sis. But she'll never, ever find another man the way she had with that stepfather. And I'm going to call him the father because that was truly the father. And even she says, well, I'm not saying you can't have nothing to do with her. We just done. And I, I, listen, you should be happy she don't want nothing to do with him because she is a wretched woman, like a wretched. I, I saw this actually three times and it really it made me more mad every time I saw it. But really, because the way she just kept gaslighting that brother, like, well, almost like I'm going to flip you off. So what you been so lying? I just, ooh, this, man, I mean, obviously it got to the point to where a police officer that I know y'all saw that the police officer is trying to mediate what was going on. So it got pretty bad. But. Now, if I want to address some things you said really quick, you know, you say a lot of women who uh, mess with Ray Ray and Pookie when they're young, they use that as an excuse. So I, I just think most people, when they're young, whether it's men or women, uh, I think that's the time if you're going to screw up is when you're young, you know, because obviously you don't really know any better. But now you keep messing with Ray Ray and Pookie, like in her situation, because obviously some time has passed and you invited Ray Ray or Pookie back into your life. Uh, and, and told, because I, I don't care what nobody says, she was cheating with him all along and told that good man, the stepfather, oh, I need some space. That's what that was about. But my thing is too, I'm going to get to that. So anyway, Donna, you said it's a prime example. Um, I don't think it's a prime example of women. I think it's a prime example of girls, a prime example of girls masquerading as women uh, to do stuff like that. Like I said, she's never, ever going to find another man like that to care for her and her child. You know what I mean? Um, and as far as passports, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of men over there that got stories the same way. I was there, stepped out of blah, blah, blah. And this funky heifer, you know, did what she did. But um, the other question is, because, yes, that mama should be dragged. Don't give me no. She should be dragged from here to there. You know, like Martin's mama said, I'm going to take you here, I'm going to take you there. Yeah, she needs to be dragged. But my other thing is no smoke for, po for Pookie. No smoke for Ray Ray. You know you wasn't there. You know damn well you was in another man's house. I don't care what that heifer telling you. 
You know you in another man's house. Matter of fact, did that funky heifer change the sheets from when he was there? This, you using another man's bath towels and washcloths and you using this TV and you got your feet kicked up and I'm sure she running around frying you chicken in that dress and nothing go to your mind like, damn. As we talk about the sisterhood being over and I firmly believe that it is, okay? But what about the brotherhood? Is there not a code? You know, and I know he's probably a horrible dude, but where is the do right in his mind to say, hey, you know what? If we gonna mess around, I can't do it up in here because this man, he might, you know what I'm saying? So he, he deserves just as much smoke. You know what? You have summed it up perfectly. I cannot dispute. You guys write this down. Demetra and I are actually agreeing on something that, that you know, anyway. Uh, write it down, though. Write it down. But no, again, like you said, you talk about the code. There is a bro code. There is a bro code. I know from my widowed mother who told me, you don't go up in no other man's house and expect good results out of that with his woman or the woman that used to be yours. There ain't, there ain't going to be no good coming out of that because that is utmost disrespect. That means you have no respect for this man that raised your daughter. If anything, you should be going over there saying, hey, brother, how you doing, man? You know, da, 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 big dap. Hey, you know, this is what I'm going to do, whatever it is. And ask that man for permission to enter his house. But like you said, who raised this, this woman? Everybody knows two men get into conflict. If there's going to be some kind of conflict there. And, you know, this is your baby daddy that wasn't there. Well, I think it's a good idea to let you pl plug up your PlayStation and kick your feet up in this man's house. And then when he comes home, because you don't know when the man's going to come home, right? Comes home, everything's going to be hunky dory. That's just common sense. But then, with the, you know, we, we go with the dumb stuff. We go with the dumb stuff. And I agree with you. When I mean when people say uh, I was young, I was young, I was young. What I'm saying is we all say that. We all say we're young, we're young, we're young. You, you make a mistake. But guess what? She, she, she circled the block. She circled the block. And that's the thing where you don't learn from those mistakes. I'm not saying a father's always going to be a father to his kid, no matter how you did. I mean, you laid with, if, if you laid with, with, with bum Checo, that's <laughs> bum Checo is so-and-so's father. There, there's no disputing that. Right. So you got to own up to that. But the thing is, um, you know, you, you can't keep leaning on. I was young. I was young. Take accountability for it. Okay, I was young. I made a mistake here, but you're making the same mistake again. You're making the same mistake again. You got a good man who's doing all of this other stuff and you're gaslighting him, disrespecting him, doing all this other stuff. And 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 that's where I think a lot of the problem is. I don't know who are raising these people. Again, the men too, because like you said, what man is going to walk up into another man's house, kick his feet up, attach the PlayStation and do all that other stuff knowing that, hey, old girl, she's only good for some ass, excuse my language, but she's only good for ass, so I know she ain't paying all this stuff up in here. What man's going to do that and put his life in danger? Who are, who are raising these folks? I know I will never, ever enter a, a uh, another man's home if he's not there. I don't care. If, oh, it's okay. Invite me in. No, no. I'll sit out on the porch, but I'm not entering the house. Fellas, that could be a setup to be killed in Texas. Heat of passion. Poo, poo, poo. Hey, if I'm if, if I'm unalive, there's only one side to the story. Right. Anything could be said, could be said. but, you know, it, it's like we've lost these things of common sense. A man does not enter another man's home if that man is not there. That woman should know that. That's not her crib. He's probably paying all the bills. And the sad thing about the whole thing, like you said. It's just sad. It's just sad. Who suffers? The child. At the end of the day, the child suffers. You know, uh, with, with my exes, using my own example, I always knew arguing with these women and doing what I got. I only got two kids. Uh, <laughs> arguing with these women and, you know, and doing this, that's not good for the children. So you know what, baby, you got it. You know what, you want to you wanna run things? Run them. Run them. I'll just send my check. Here you go. There you go. Because I'm looking at what's best for the child. The truth is going to come out in the end some somewhere, somehow. And it did. But, yeah, it all comes down to respect. This woman has no respect for herself. She has no respect for her child. She has no respect for that man that's paying those bills. And definitely doesn't have respect for her baby daddy because that man could have been killed straight up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, you know, baby daddy circled the block.
he, with circling the block means I'm back, you know. And I'm saying I don't have a problem with a person circling the block, uh, but I have a problem with a person circling the block if that other person has somebody and then they maybe drop you for that person, or if you circle in the block and you don't mean them no earthly good, you know. Don't circle the block if you're gonna be, you know, doing what she was doing when she was 17. You know, if you just back for a good time, not a long time, then that actually help, hurts the child because now the child seems like she's maybe getting to know dad. You know, they're playing the game together, this, that, and the other. And it's like, are you there to stay or are you just there because mama got the chicken frying dress on with no drawers? You real, know what real, I mean? Uh, real, real, real quick though, why couldn't she let the baby go to his crib? Why come you to this man's why? crib? Cause he probably ain't got one, probably don't have one. And which is why she told, you know, uh, and I'm gonna call him the real dad. Uh, I need some space. That's why she told him that. Cause he probably a bum still ain't got nowhere to go. Still doing what he was doing when she was 17, you know, and she's st st stuck back down memory lane uh, of, of yesteryear when Pookie was doing this and, you know, rolling around in the backseat of the car. Or whatever the case is. I mean, I'm just saying. So. Isn't that something? You were homeless and this man uplifted you. Or you uplifted it, you know, together. You built together. And you're willing to throw it away over some, in the words of Demetri K, two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but the, the, the problem is she's still homeless here. She homeless here, you know. Because no woman in her right mind would throw a good man out the way. I mean, if you've been together some time. Yeah, it ain't going to be perfect or whatever the case is. But ain't no woman worth her way gonna throw no good man away that's taking care of her and a child that's not biologically his. So she's still homeless here. She's still living in yesteryear when, you know, uh, Pookie did that thing he did with her. You know, and I'm sure he obviously got the silver tongue, the gift of gab. He could tell her whatever, you know. And she, he, but like I said, now nah, he did the baby daddy ain't just came over there just to chill and come. You know, you was over there chilling, chilling, chilling like a villain for real. Right. And it takes two, because like I said, how did he contact her? And, you know, not that we're getting into that, but the thing is, if this guy was a piece of crap and you don't want nothing to do with them, the communication would have never happened. So yeah, obviously I mean, there's something going on between the two of those two people that keeps attracting them back to each other. Yeah. I mean, even if, you know, he says, Hey, you know what? I, I, I know I've been a, you know, a bad dude, but I want to get to know my child. All right. You know, the, but the thing is though, great. Let me talk it over with her dad. Let's see how we feel. This is a weird thing, right? Because he has been raising the child as his daughter. And that is who she knows to be his father. So how do you make a decision like that without him? And then it's because it sounds like it was a surprise to him that that even happened. Because he comes home and sees the dude there. So, you know, she just really didn't have any regard for him at all. And that's why I always tell y'all men now. And I wouldn't doubt to. I don't think this is the first time he's had issues with her because just in her attitude was just so stanky. You know, I, I you know, I don't think we gonna be back together. You know, like she's so, <laughs> like she's surprised or whatever. That's why I tell you, men, really look what's behind the booty. You know what I mean? Because you don't ever want to be with somebody y'all uh, built some life together and they don't even regard you enough to say, hey, babe. You know, her daddy came back and be contacting me on Facebook or whatever it is, and he wants to. Come, uh, come back into her life. What you think about that? Like he wasn't even included in that. So to me, it sounds like she was more on the, uh, the Jezebel side, if you will, the Delilah side, uh, maybe a little bit on the masculine side. I don't got to ask him nothing, you know, <laughs> or whatever. So I feel bad. I, my heart hurts for him. What I wish for him is that he finds him a nice woman who will love and appreciate him. Uh, Cause that's, gonna, that's traumatizing to somebody to be told. And I'm sure he knew in the back of his mind that she really didn't want no space, but he went with it. Like, okay, you know, and then he went back home and then have to be traumatized to see you move. Not even just, you don't have just a man you met at the club somewhere. You got a man that d dumped you and this baby in the backseat of a car. And now you talking to me spicy. That's horrible. And at the end, and did you notice the cop was there? Why is yeah, the cop there? Because maybe her and the baby daddy was, you know, was about to get pretty crunk and disorderly. Exactly. So, you know, what I'm saying is, see, and Dimitri, I, you know, I know being, being women, you guys, you know, think a man should think a certain way and have this empathetic thing. We don't. It's territorial. Men, like animals, we're territorial. Any two men, I, I could be walking to the park 
just minding my own business with my dog or whatever. And there's another dude and he's just walking. No, he doesn't have an animal. When we walk by each other, it's territorial where, you know, violence could ensue at any time. And that's just how men are. We're very territorial, right? So ladies, when, when, when you put a man in that situation, because like I said, I just noticed that cop was there and I said, ooh, something must have about to jump off. Somebody could have lost their life. You know, you're, you're putting both parties, both of these dudes in danger, you know, with themselves. You're putting them in danger. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it, it isn't hard to do what is right and uh, common decency, common decency. Okay, I have a, a baby with this man and this is the guy I'm living with, and this is the guy that's take, paying all the bills. Who is my allegiance with? Now, now, me, personally, if somebody's providing a roof over my head and all and paying all the bills, to me, just me, that is who my allegiance is, is to, because I need a roof over my head. Not this guy that just shows up once, hey, like you said, be, be a father to you. Be, remember that song, Be a Father to Your Child? Da -da -da -da. Right. <laughs> and that was a jam. But yeah. um, be a father to your child, you know, and keep it at that. But look, she just blew up the whole spot. Where is she going to go now if this guy decides to throw her out? And so, Demetra, this is why men do not really want to date women that already have kids because these issues could come up. I'm not and I'm not speaking for all the guys, whatever I'm saying in general. This is why things could come up. You not my daddy. You know, you could do all this other stuff. Stepdads get no respect at the end of the day in a lot of situations. You know, I had a stepdad. You had a stepdad. My stepdad was horrible, not to me, but to my mom. He was horrible and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes you, you get a good one. Like, you got a good one. That's great. But in general, most men, we do not want to deal with other people's children. We just don't want to deal with it. And then we got to deal with situations like this. It's sad, but it happens. Yeah. And, you know, uh, for that, the, the, the real dad, I'm going to call him, you know, obviously he was surprised by that, you know, uh, and he shouldn't have been surprised. Even if she decided to rekindle with her baby daddy, she should have just said that. Listen, he came back into my life. And before we go do something, you know, that's really going to hurt you because that's going to hurt regardless. Right. But at least if it's you're upfront and you're honest about it, that person is not wondering, damn, what happened? What did I do? Is it somebody else? Because I'm sure she told him it was, and I just need some space and, you know, all that other stuff. And obviously it turns out to not to be true. She's just boinking her baby daddy that left her in the backseat of a car, you know, um, homeless. And so it shouldn't have been a surprise to him. And it's like, if he meant anything to her at all, or even to her daughter, she should have had the decency to just tell him, I'm going to rekindle a relationship with you know, the baby daddy or whatever, and, and, and then let him have a clean break, not, you know, going off wondering, what did I do? Was it me? Because a lot of times it was not nothing you did. She's just weak, horrible person. You know, baby daddy came slithering back into the li her life and, you know, she ate it all up, maybe told her, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we could, we need to be ready. Because then she said, oh, we're just co-parenting. And like you said, ding back. I'm putting the ding bat in there. We was, we was, we was parenting. What are you talking about? See, that's that gaslighting. Well, I, you know, I need him to be around so we can co-parent you funky heifer. We was co-parenting together. I raised her. What are you talking about? This man has been gone. Probably didn't pay no child support off doing whatever he's got to do. And I guarantee you down to a donor. He got 50, 11 other kids out there, probably by just as many women. And she allows him to come back. You know, and that's well, fine if he wants to come back, but don't come back when she's already got somebody, you know. And as far as the stepfather, um, stepmama, yeah, I mean, I get it. I get that there's a lot of people who don't want to be step parents because um, it's true for a lot of women. Uh, I think for me, because, you know, I'll be 53 soon, you know. I'd be hard for me. Yeah, I'd be 53 on Saturday. Can you believe that? Don't let No, I don't. Out. I thought it was 73. <laughs> my mind was about to run off into my mouth and I closed my mouth. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily want to be a step parent, I don't think, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the girl, girl getting old. And if I was to be a step, and I, okay, definitely if you have older children, that's different, but you got some little kids and the baby mamas and all that. No, I got, I, I just don't need that kind of stress in my life. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have stepchildren for saying, 
So I never had that issue with the stepmom. I mean, the mom and all that. You know, got along pretty good. So it was not, no issues there. But yeah, unfortunately, it is a, it's a thankless job. Um, I actually saw a video not too long ago of a, a mama ran up on stepmama because the stepmama put her hands on her daughter and the daddy was there. And, you know, she told the mom, I told you not the stepmom, don't be putting your hands on my daughter. She says, well, she got disrespectful with me. And the dad and her was saying, well, you know, she, as long as she here, we're going to be putting hands on her. She's going to discipline her the way she want to discipline her. See that all that stuff right there. Uh, it, it, it's just a lot, you know, cause I know that there's a lot of step mamas out there. I'm just speaking from, you know, some that I know that are horrible people. They don't like the children. They just put up with the children because they being treated like a trampoline by the, by the daddy. So I don't know what your intentions are when you put your hands on my daughter. So I, you know, and I had to have that conversation with, uh, my daughter's, uh, you know, stepmom. uh, she was like, well, you know, he said, it's okay if I discipline her. Uh, you know, by whooping her. And I said, but what did I tell you? She says, you told me not to put your uh, my hands on her. I said, and go with that. Go with that. Because if I find out you put hands on my daughter, I'm going to put hands on you and him. <laughs> and she says, I know. I said, just go with that. If she needs to be disciplined, you tell her or her father, you tell me. So the step stepping dynamics, there's a lot going on with that. You know, and I was always this type of stepmom. Uh, and I wasn't really married to their dad, but I'm just, for the state, sake of conversation, I, I stayed out of all that. They come over. I don't need to be all up in the middle. I'm sitting in between them. You know, what we doing today? Oh, me, 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 me. No, nah, y'all do y'all. You, you know, I'm glad you came over. I love you. Because I still have a relationship with, you know, two of my so-called stepchildren uh, to this day. Um, but I, I wasn't that type of uh, step parent, if you will. I just, oh, it was about me. I'm just not feeling love today. Oh, you know why you got to be spending that? So there's a lot going on with that. So I don't blame anybody who does not want to step in. Like you said, too, I think especially in today's time, it's probably just a little bit different. Because like you said, we both have step um, parents. I had a stepmom and a stepdad. Um, I, I like my stepdad more than I like my stepmom. But, you know, he, he, he was he was wonderful, you know. So, yeah. Yep, everybody, we got to think about this, ladies. Like I said, when you're building with a man and, you know, and I'm going to tell you from the way I would look at it. I look at it betrayal. I look at it as betrayal. And this is why men and women on both sides, this is where the, the, the bitterness comes in because you, you're giving it your all and then you get dumped on, you know, and that's where the bitterness comes in. Sad, but true. It's very sad. So like I said, in closing that segment, I wish nothing but the worst for her. And, you know, that's, I know that sounds kind of nasty and evil, but I know, I, I, you know, I think we got to get to a point in life where we just don't lie to kick it no more. Well, I just think, now I hope karma is like, Open up, open up. And I hope every time that heifer turn around, karma is. Because I don't think people understand about karma. Karma ain't going to leave you alone until you really understand. Like you really get it in here. What you did and you understand that. And you have a real atonement, right? Atonement is not just, well, I, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have did that to y'all. Atonement is uh, turning away from that behavior altogether, right? So something tells me she's not there yet. Um, and karma is going to be kicking her in her tailbone every chance she gets. And you know what? I ain't going to be mad about it. And for that uh, wonderful individual, and again, we don't know all about those people. We just know what they tell us. From what I could tell, see, seem like he's a pretty good dude. I really hope he finds true love, one that will never hurt him and appreciate everything uh, that he is doing for her and, uh, and the man that I, I believe him to be, I don't know. Uh, I appreciate him as a good man, but nothing good for her. Nothing, not even a, a dried up piece of chewed bubble gum. And I, I just want to end it like this real, real quick, ladies, especially you young ladies, we, you know, we got some dirt bag dudes out there. Yes. And you guys know what to look for because people tell you constantly, leave this guy alone. Don't deal with this. You, you're seeing what he's not doing here, whatever the deal is. Ladies, when you got a good man and there's not a lot of them out here, you know, per capita, stick with that good man, especially if he pulled you out of homelessness and stuff like that. I, you know, get some kind of a loyalty toward that that person, you know, that that pulled you out of the depths of your worst condition that you could be in. You know, I know you're young. You ladies are young. But but that's not an excuse. You look at your youngness, you know, real quick. 
it's funny. I was talking to a military buddy of mine and he was saying how he got disrespected because, you know, he was in the military. And some people, you know, you got a lot of people, especially MAGA people, they're all patriotic, but they won't join the military. You know what I mean? But they're patriotic. Oh, uh, MAGA. but uh, could you join the military? Oh, no, no, I can't do that. Right. And he was saying how, you know, whatever the deal is. And I said, you know, if people would realize. Because what it was, he did like 10 or 12 years and then he got out. And then you got these military people that, like myself, that did 24 or whatever. And we try to uh, diminish these people's service. It doesn't matter if you did a day. You answered the call. And you got to think about this. You're in your prime when you're young like that. When a person gives four years of your prime years to the military, to the government, and to service, those are your prime years. You're just... Your prime years that you you can't do what you want to do. You got to do what they tell you to do. Your prime years. And, and that's a big thing. And so, ladies, when you're younger, young men, when you're younger like that and you're young and you make that mistake. These are your prime years. Do you want to go on and have to start all over again and keep making that same mistake? So you got to learn from those mistakes. And I'm going to leave it at there. Learn from the, the mistakes so you don't have to keep repeating this cycle. Yeah, and sometimes, unfortunately, experience has to be your best teacher. And karma has to keep, as I say, kicking you in your tail. Have you ever been kicked in the tailbone before? I, 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 that mess hurt. That hurt worse. Than I wasn't I, kicked in it, but I fell on it. Yeah. I, yeah, I had this jerk when I was in uh, uh, was it, uh, ju- nah, elementary school. Not elementary, uh, junior high. He thought it was funny to go around kicking the girls in the tailbone. That hurt so bad. How? With all that cushion you got? How? You know, you kick somebody <laughs> just right. You know, and I didn't have all that in, in junior high, okay? <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, sometimes experience just has to be the best teacher. You'll, you'll get it eventually, you know? So anyway, Donovan, I have a question for you. Let me let me put it up here. Hopefully I have an answer. Hopefully I have an answer. I think you would, but I'm interested in, in hearing how uh, you go about answering. Yes, Caitlin Clark is a bad woman, but go ahead. You stupid. I, you, know, I, you know what's so funny? I didn't even know who Caitlin Clark is until I heard so many Negroes talking about her. I was like, "Who's Caitlin Clark?" I was like, Ka- Ka- "Caitlin Jenner." Okay, no, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> I even know. <laughs> but I hear again, a lot. women not supporting women's sports. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even watch men's sports. I, I don't have the ability to. So uh, there is that. All right, here we go. What kind of question is that? <laughs> what kind of question? To date the perfect alpha male? Absolutely I would. The man that's going to take care of everything. I'm insured. I've got stocks and bonds. I've got a house. I've got cars. The man could build stuff. I mean, okay, in all seriousness, even though everything I said right there was true about myself, you are dealing with ladies, a man that has all of the tools that bring something to the relationship, not just protection, uh, problem solving, uh, productivity, uh, and procreation, not just that stuff. But I need this done, Donovan. You know, I'm the total package. And I'm halfway, you know, I'm, I'm all right looking. I'm, I'm, I'm okay on that. I got all my teeth, you know, at my age, whatever. You know, I, I'm, I'm there. So speaking for myself, I'm educated. I mean, I, I sometimes sit here and I think, wow, I, I've lived a very interesting life. And Demetri, you know, I've said this several times. I've dated women that have said they can't date me because I have my shit together. And what, what I think that they meant by that was the fact that I'm complete. And for some reason, that scares them because they're so used to damn drama and, you know, having some some kind of leverage to, to hold against the man, whatever the deal is. So I got benefits, whatever the deal is. Yeah, I definitely would date myself because I have come with the complete package. Not saying I'm perfect. Just because you have a complete package doesn't mean you're perfect. But it does mean I make the right decisions for myself and for my family. Yes, I would date myself. I'm going to play devil's advocate and you can do the same with me. Might you be suffering or or not suffering, but might you have described the Prince Charming syndrome when you described yourself? 
No, no, because okay. like I said, um, I'm the complete package, but I'm not perfect. So, you know, when I when I think of Prince Charming, like the Disney movies, isn't the guy always perfect? He's great looking. He talks great. He has the whole, you know, everything. No, that, that, that ain't me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fair looking. I'm 5'10". I'm not six feet. You know, I don't, I don't have all of the attributes, but I am complete as a person. I'm complete. Okay, so the, for those of y'all who don't know what the, oh, it's probably something else, but the, the, I call it Prince Charming Syndrome, where uh, in a lot of uh, Disney fairy tales, or even just, not even Disney, but just fairy tales in general, right? Uh, when you think of the prince uh, and the princess, the, the princess is doing what? She's always waiting on the knight in shining armor. She's waiting on Prince Charming to show up. And, you know, Prince Charming... He's cute. He's got a nice horse. She probably doesn't have to work because he's a prince, which means he's probably got some money. He's got his, you know, portion of the castle. He's not the king yet, but he's got his, you know, he could take care of her. She'd be all right financially and stuff. But with that Prince Charming, rarely do they describe to that woman, that prince, princess, not only does he, you know, because the six foot six uh figures and whatever the six is gonna be uh he has to treat you nice he has to be respectful he's got to be considerate he's got to be loyal he's not gonna cheat on you and you know he's he's just gonna he's gonna care for the inside of you as much as he's gonna care for the outside of you so when you say you would date you you said all the, you know, the, the technical stuff, but describe to, cause there might be a, a young lady. And I know there's a few that's been in the comment section that says, I want Donovan. He's mine. D tell them how you would take care of the inside of them. Not, not, now let's keep it clean. Okay. We <laughs> I was going to clarify that. Like, Hey, you know, I, I don't want to get flagged. <laughs> <laughs> not that inside. So how would you take why how would you care for their emotions and their mental and you know the spiritual stuff is on them, but th that stuff. Again, I, I send them to therapy. And send them to therapy from dealing with you? No, just whatever <laughs> the whatever their issues are, I send them to therapy. Because I'm not a, you know, I, you know, you know, that, that that's a good question because again, um in relationships, you gotta talk. A lot of people are quick to get into the bed. You gotta talk. Because something you can get into a bed with a psycho, you know what I mean, and not even know it, you know what I mean, you know, because you didn't talk. So, um, you know, I'm not even though I have a degree in in the part of psychology, I'm not a doctor. I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm really a, a terrible coach because well, I don't. I guess what I'm saying is how, like, how you how are you gonna treat her? I'm not talking about uh, the the money and the house, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about. Like your woman, because they talk about this a lot. Men come home. It's the difference between them sitting in the car for 30 minutes before they go into the mm -hmm. house or, you know, they run right in. So think about in reverse. How are you going to treat that woman to where she's like, I just, oh, just love him. Never mind the Birkin bags and the Gucci bags that he buys me. I just want, oh, I just can't wait to be with him because he makes me feel so wonderful. Like, what do you, like, what? How would she benefit from being with you in that aspect? Well, there's an old rule, Demetra. You treat people the way you want to be treated, right? Yeah. So, you know, if you go by that rule, then, you know, it it, it, it takes care of itself. Like, I was watching this movie. I don't know what it is. I've been watching a lot of Irene Cara movies from the 80s and stuff. Because that woman was beautiful. And do you guys realize she died alone and they didn't find her for a couple of days right. because she became a recluse? I'm like, how does somebody who was an actress and a singer who is used to people looking and being around people and entertaining people die as a recluse? But she died as a recluse. And I was looking at, at her movies. And a lot of her movies are kind of tragic. She kind of plays the same role, too. Right. Uh, you know, she's always the singer and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. else. And then this one with George Siegel, I forgot the name of the movie. She, this older guy, and she gets into the bath tub with him and she she bathes with him and it was a very innocent thing they weren't like making love or nothing like that but he was an older guy she was and i said you know wow you know that where her guard is down and they're just having this really intimate moment but not a sexual intimate moment and i said wow that is something that you know 
I've done before with a girl I was in love with. And I remember how loving that was and being that person, you know, being, you know, that person that you want to do. Like I said, you treat people the way you want to be treated. And if that person loves you or cares about you, they're going to, they're going to reciprocate that. So to me, that's the golden rule. I mean, you know, what person wants to run around here talking about slap me in the face and treat me like crap and throw the cake in my face, Annie Mae type stuff? Because even in, in what's love got to do with it, did Ike not love Tina? Did he not love her, even though he was abusive? In the movie, did he not love her? I, I would say yeah. If I had to, I'd say yeah. Yeah, he did. I mean, so it, again, it just depends, you know, how you want to do it. But I, I just believe if you're dealing with, again, you got to talk. If you're dealing with somebody who is not as confident as you are and not on the level that you might want to be, you got to have patience. You got to have discernment. You got to have love. You got to have empathy because not everybody comes from the same experience that, that you come from. You know, and if you don't have those things to, 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 to build that person up, you're going to have problems in your relationship because you've got to be able to build each other up. Simple as that. Even, even as complete as I am, Am I complete though, Demetra? No, I'm not complete because I am missing the woman in my life to push me in the direction I need to go. All right. Uh, so I don't have any more questions for you for now. I'll let you up off the hot seat. Put, put my spatula back in my apron. Uh, okay, so my turn. Would you date you? Why or why not? You know, oftentimes... And I've seen this question before, so obviously not a, an original question, but I've seen this and I, I often see people say, yeah, 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 I would date me, I would date me. But then it's like, have you really sat down? Because I've thought about this. Have you really sat down and just really thought about would you date yourself? And I think for now, and I, by now, I've spent enough time by myself because when you're uh, alone, meaning that you're not in a relationship, those are the times you're really supposed to do a lot of self-assessment self-reflection, you know, really getting to know yourself. Am I a good person? Did I do, you know, this right or that right? Is there anything I can improve on? And I, I would say I've spent a lot of time really, you know, taking an assessment. And, and I would say, yeah, I would date my, myself because I often joke about it and say, man, I wish I knew somebody like me. You know, I had somebody like me, <laughs> you know, um, but I would. For one, because I, I care about people and I care about myself. And there's a lot of people who, for one, they don't care about themselves, but they say they care about people, right? It's like, how do you care about somebody else and you don't care about yourself? Like, really look at yourself. Look at the things that you're going through. Look at this, look, take an assessment. And you, you can really say, wow, do I care about myself by the way that I'm living, the things that I eat, the things that I think, the things that I watch? Do I really care about myself? Am I uh, important to myself? And a lot of people will have to answer no. A lot of people say, I'm, you know, I'll put everybody else first. I'm burning a candle at both ends when it comes to everybody else. And then, you know, then you try to care about yourself. There's nothing left. So I would say, yeah, for one, because I care about myself. And that I care about myself. I'm not leaving myself empty. And I have uh, I have what it takes to care about other people. But I would also say for me, that's been a flaw, uh, a blessing and a curse. I guess that's what I'm saying. Caring about people. Because sometimes when you care about people, you end up getting hurt really bad. And it's not that you care about people because I'm looking for you to give it back to me. Or I'm going to only do this for you because you're doing it for me. It's when you really are a genuine person and you care and you help people, I would say most of the time it's not reciprocated and I don't have a problem with it not being reciprocated, but I have a problem with it being something else returned like evil, you know, or misdeeds or just something you didn't deserve. Right. Um, so I can say, honestly, I don't do that to people. I never have. And I never will. Um, the other thing is I'm a good person. A lot of times when we hear a person say, I'm a good person. And you say, well, what does that mean that you're a good person? You know, were you just good today? Are you, are you, you know, the, are you a good person in general? And I often say you could judge yourself on how other people judge you and how other people see you. There is not one person that knows me. Now, I'm not saying this, like Donovan to be able to tell you she get on my nerves a lot. 
But Donovan won't be able to tell you that I'm a bad person. Just like I wouldn't be able to say that about Donovan. I wouldn't be able to say he's a bad person. So you judge yourself on how the people see you. Because it's easy for you to say, well, I'm a good person. Well, that lady that we just got through talking about might say, I'm a good person. Really, Heffa? You just screwed over this man who took care of you and your daughter when you was getting humped on in the backseat and left for the homeless, you know? Um, but it's what other people say about you. Or other people saying, man, that he is oh, he's a good person. He man, he just I don't I don't have nothing bad to say about him. Because my ex-pastor, who is no longer here, he he had a saying that said, Well, send the dash will last, right? Not the day that you're born and not the day that you die. That line in between is the things that you did, the things that you said, how you lived your life, right? Like I always imagine, and I really think it's a good idea that, you know, people have, and I know this is kind of morbid, but have a, a, a live funeral, right? Don't have the funeral while I'm dead because I ain't going to be able to hear you saying all that. Have a funeral while I'm here. And in that funeral, because not even me and I have been to our share of funerals, and most of the time people get up and say, oh, yeah, you don't go miss her. Oh, yeah. Sometimes people say that a raggedy son of a bitch. <laughs> so what are those like envision you're in your funeral? What are people saying about you? Are they saying good things or are they saying bad things? I just feel like people will say good things about me. So that's kind of how I judge whether I'm a good person. Plus. I don't wake up and, 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 and tend on doing people harm. I'm not saying sometimes you don't harm people. Sometimes it's by accident. Like, you know, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I didn't think about what I said. I shouldn't have said it. Would you forgive? But if you wake up, this, uh, today is the day I'm going to really just, oh, like you intend on doing it, doing those things. You're probably not a good person, you know? So I would date me. Uh Cause like I said, for one, you know, I'm a good person. I, I defined it and I really care about people. I really do. But isn't the question this, if, if you would date you and I would date me, why is it that people were having such a hard time finding people that are compatible? What, what do you think that is? Uh, well, Donna, but I know you to be a good person. And, you know, y'all know me by now. I'm not one of those people going to lie. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I know you to be a good person. And unfortunately, and Donovan, I, 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 I trust me. I know you're a good person. Make it plain. Know, Make it plain. No, no, I'm not saying I, I know you help people to a fault. I mean, hell, I just sent off a letter to a handful, you know, for you not too long ago, you know. So I know you help people to a fault. And it doesn't make you a sucker or anything because good people like to help people. All right. You need, you're in the bad way. If I can help you, I'm going to help you. Uh, but unfortunately, there's people who are looking for help and they're looking to help you or hurt you while you're helping them. They don't. And sometimes as good people, our discernment is off because we're good. We sometimes see good in people that's really not there, right? A lot of times it's hopeful, it's wishful thinking. Ah, oh, they seem all right. I think they're going to be a good person. They end up not being that uh, so I, I just, I, I, I don't know. That's kind of my philosophy. Maybe it's flawed. I just think, uh, good people get hurt the most. I think good people have the most broken hearts and the most disappointments. They just do, you know, cause Donovan, I know this probably been sometimes you think about what if I was just that dude, like just man, if her, man, I, ain't well, I used to be that dude and women loved me. Right. You know, they loved me. The more I treated them bad. I mean, I couldn't keep them, keep them away. So, but then why don't you, why aren't you, because I get asked this sometimes too, why, why don't you go back to that? Well, number one, you learn from your mistakes and I wasn't growing as a person. I mean, I can do that all day. Look at all these dudes out here in the streets. I got the women, I got the drugs, I got this. And they're still there. <laughs> they're still there. They haven't grown. They're not moving in a different direction. You're not getting any blessings because you're living a lifestyle that is a, a to me, a snapshot. And then you just stay there. You, you, you don't want any more than, than, than where you're at. And I know yeah. where I'm at right now. If I revert back to that guy. Okay. Hypothetically, if I'm here and I revert back to that guy, that means I got to go back down here. I don't want to go back down there. So that's the way I, I, I look at it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I've never been that person. Um, I've always been very nice and sweet. I don't sometimes, you know, I, I think I should I always feel like I have to clarify on here. You know, when you're hosting a show, 
you, you, you got to be a little bit, uh, I don't want to say austere, austere meaning, meaning hard, uh, but you, you know, you got to be on your square. Because unfortunately, and I tried it when I first started, it was very sweet and nice. Oh, I know I didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. Oh, God, try to do it. Now I'm like, hey, you know what? You know, <laughs> but that don't mean I'm like that in real life. You know, I can be, but I just never been that person to be mean to people or to dudes and doing them dirty, and running them for the money. And I just never have. And trust me, I could have. And I, I'm actually that woman that'll tell a man, well, thank you so much. You know, I know, you know, you want to take me here or buy me this, but I don't really, I, let's just be friends. Cause I know there's women out there lead you on. Yeah, we going out to five. The girls gotta eat. Oh, you 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 gonna be with him? No. And shoot, I, he he offered. Cause I, I I'm one of those ones that think women should tell a man no. If you're not interested, or tell him no. Don't go out and spend this man's money, whether it's on a taco or anything. Tell him no, so that he can go and go find the woman that is going to really appreciate all of that. Cause otherwise, you're just in it for the bag. But um, I don't find pleasure in being mean to people. I, I'm actually one of those people, if I feel like I've been mean or something, I, I, I will just feel like, I, I feel horrible. I'm like, what can I do? Or, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I'm going to cook you dinner or, you know, oh, you, oh yeah, let's go do this. Cause I really just feel bad uh, to do that. So it's just not my nature. Uh, but I'm, I'm like, you know, I know that I could probably treat men disgusting and they ain't going to never go nowhere. Cause I tend to know that men, some men, not all. Some men, they, they, those women that treat them filthy and disgusting, those are the women they pine for. Those are the women their heart breaks for. Those are the women they'll never leave. But the women that are, you know what, I'm just here for you and I want to make sure you're okay. I love you. And I, you know, all of that and care for you. Those are the women that, that end up getting the heart broke. So like you said, you know, you end up being single. You're like, I don't want to be single, but I'm safe. So right, and and then and then those very brothers that don't want to change their life, and you're like we did a show when the guy was bitter. Those are the guys you guys are talking about. They did not want to change where they were at, and they're running the women. They got the drugs, whatever, and they're by themselves. At the end of the day, karma always comes. I, don't, I know a lot of people don't believe in karma. I do. Me too. Those are the guys that are sitting there. Their kids don't visit them because they weren't in their kids' life when they were making them. See, and those are the guys, but the guys that were like family men and things like that, they have, you know, people that are taking care of them. My, my grandfather, he's a good guy, had people to, all his life. His kids are taking care of him. He's doing what he's got to do. He's passed on now, whatever it is. See, and, and there's a difference in how they do that. So like when these women are on TikTok talking about these bitter men, whatever, you're talking about those guys that treated women like crap and they're getting their karma. I have yet to run into a man who took care of his family and he's in a nursing home by himself, bitter. I have yet, I have yet to see that. Yeah, and like you said, even I mean, even for women, it's like if you treat people well, then people will treat you well. It, like I said, it's a give and take. Do on to others as you will have them do on to you. But don't think you're gonna spend your whole life being a horrible person, and then magically some good stuff is gonna happen to you. You know, you all and, and, and you know what's so crazy, Donovan? Like I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not, but it just makes sense. Treat people right, you'll have a good life. Or treat people right, they'll treat you right. But some people, they it's like they want they, they they have it so hard. It's like it's life is not supposed to be that hard. But you won't sit and say, well, what role did I play in my life being hard? I know some people just like life is hard and is not their fault. Okay, but for most people, I think they don't really take stock of what am I doing? What how am I contributing? to my life being hard. And that's why I said, when we are in that alone time, are we really sitting and thinking about ourselves? Or are we just blaming on and think what they did to me? Are you saying, you know what? Okay, uh, okay. This is probably how I could be a different person, a better person, or I could do this better. Da, 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 or I ain't going to be the same, the same food twice, or, you know, or whatever it is your assessment is. But a lot of people don't do that. They go on and hop into the next bed. And so, it'll be a horrible person there. Yeah. And so so what you're describing is victimhood. And that's how it is when it comes to politics. Like I said, we, we see what's going on in Dalton. We see how the Democratic Party is treating black people. Right. In general. Right. We see that because, you know, we, we do this. I know it's not a public, but it's the same thing. It's victimhood. Uh, 
um, what, what's the first thing that girl up that lay that mayor up in Dalton said? Y'all black, y'all black, y'all should support me because I'm black. They don't want me because I'm a black woman in power. Victimhood. What does her being a black know? They're coming at you because you're corrupt and you're not doing things according to the law. And you got to ask yourself. And, and for me, I had to ask myself when I was a, a lowly airman and I had to ask myself, what is it that I, I need to do? Not what everybody else needs to do. What is it I need to do to be better and to move up the rank? Because at the end of the day, I have to do the work. Not Demetra, not so-and-so, not the girl I want. I have to do the work. And I've got to be open to people who have more experience. And they tell me, here's the, here's the blueprint. Just read this, follow these directions, you'll be successful. That's all I had to do. Follow this. You got any questions? Come back to me. But in our community, we will give them the blueprint. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has given us the blueprint. Marcus Garvey has given us the blueprint. And we refuse to follow it. And then we wonder why the migrants are getting this, why so-and-so is getting that. We keep throwing these uh, uh, elected officials that look like us back into office. And then we wonder why we're not getting anything. Victimhood. We got to stop victimhood and start saying, you know what? I got to start looking out for myself first. What part am I playing in this relationship? doesn't matter if it's personal relationship or outside relationship politically that I could do better. And so when I started looking at myself, Demetra, that is when I started being successful. I said, you know what? I can't depend on this person. I got, I got to depend on me. I got to bet on black me. And when I started doing that in, in, in the aspect of doing that, I couldn't say I got to step on everybody. And, you know, no matter what it costs, I, you know, I'm going to screw this person. I'm going to screw that person because that's going to come back on you eventually. Have you guys heard of a, a guy named uh, P. Diddler? You guys heard of that guy, right? Look what's happening to him right now. You didn't want to give those guys that are publishing. Karma's real, you guys. It's real. If you were out here and you were out here uh, disrespecting these women, having babies, not taking care of them, do you think that? Do you think Joe Biden is about to stop back child support? It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You see what I'm saying? So if you're out here not handling your responsibilities, I love children. I love I love having a big family, but I can't afford it. And, and that's what I knew. I got to look at myself and then I got to treat people the way I want to be treated. I just want to be treated fairly. That's it. When I started treating people the way I wanted to be treated, I'm totally fine. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been blessed ever since. But if I turn into that guy that I used to be, you've seen training day, right? Oh, no. <laughs> 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 that, you know, I, I don't want to be that guy because that guy is so unhappy. At least if I'm by myself, I'm not hurting anybody. And I got cats. <laughs> so. At the end of the day, okay, I got some cats. Uh, yeah, no, so uh, I, I I love it. So I'm going to start doing questions like that um, more often. Just You know, I thought about that. I was like, no, let's, let's switch it up a little bit. But yeah, you know, it's the, like you said, I love that you said that, the blueprint. Is a blueprint of life, you know. Just, just use it. And life ain't got to be that hard, you know. My mom said there ain't nothing new under the sun. If it worked for our grandparents that stayed together and their parents and their parents, ain't nothing new. That what's changed? What's changed under the sun? The you love her, she loves you. You build together. Yes, there's going to be some conflict and some difficult, but. Guess what, baby? If you're successful and I'm out there working as a man, which is, ain't going to change, you're building an empire. Two incomes is better than one. Where does all this conflict come in? Oh, I don't, I, ain't, I don't do 50-50. So you rather do 100 by yourself? Come on, ladies. Right. Yeah. That part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being silly out there in the streets. But anyway, we're going to be back. Uh, Donovan, what you want to talk about? Uh, politics. I think there's a lot of stuff going on politically. Yes, absolutely. Um, a lot of stuff going on in Africa, by the way. African Diaspora News Channel, if you guys want to you know, uh, get on top of that. That's where I get all my information when it comes to the diaspora. You guys, I'm telling you, download that because if you don't understand what's happening over there, you definitely won't understand what's going on here. It's the same blueprint, same book. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, we're going to be back. So you guys do have a great rest of your afternoon and we'll see you today at 5 p.m. Central Time. Don't be late. 
Well, we might be just maybe five, ten, maybe. I'm gonna try my best to be on time. Uh, but anyway, uh, you guys wanna um help the channel? There's ways to donate. Love it, appreciate you. See you in a little bit. Peace.